Okay, can we continue? All of you is here? Yes. 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 Okay, so after we know that. Okay, so after we learned about the CEC, okay, one of the most important um matters that happen in the soil or things that we have to consider when we are dealing with soil is the acidity okay it's either acidity or alkalinity but however as i mentioned before in uh, malaysia which have a humid um, season panas dan hujan a soil our soil is prone and and the agriculture activities contribute to acidification of soil okay so what is actually a soil ph so a soil ph is a degree of soil acidity or alkalinity it is expressed as a soil ph okay kalau you tengok by by the term is that it is a negative log of the hydrogen ions okay concentration in the soil water solution okay so i always say that the ph is master variable you tak payah check yang lain dulu Kalau pergi kat satu tempat, satu ladang, if you want to go to one plantation, you check the pH first. If you want to know everything about the soil. I said that pH is a master variable. It, it, it determines the chemicals, the biologicals and the nutrient properties of a soil. You tak payah tengok yang lain lah. When you check the soil pH, it is acidic. For example, the reading is 4. You know something, some, something is not right with the, the your crop something uh, won't be right for your nutrients something won't be right for your biological properties which is the microbes okay because ph determines almost everything ph reflects ph reading reflects uh, 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 all the uh, other properties okay because uh dulu saya pernah tunjukkan yang ph it determines the nutrient availability okay first thing you see here when salt have to be a slightly <coughs> acidic or neutral or slightly alkaline so when the ph is 7 npk ca mg and sulfur which are the macronutrients it will be available that's why you can see it is broader eh? the, the it is wider okay but the the this is the uh, micronutrients micronutrients are needed in a very small amount so that's why there's the kurus dekat sini it's thin here it's not white okay because it is only needed in quite in a uh, uh, not in a large amount lah but if you if you check your ph it is slightly acidic which is six you see the uh, okay if you see the the ph is slightly acidic you can see that the 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 availability of the nutrients the kurus sikit lah eh? it's getting thinner if the soil ph is 4 that's it a strong acid soil so uh, the 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 nitrogen p k c a m g all these macronutrients which are needed in large amount sikit je boleh diambil boleh available it will only little available for the crop optics but in acidic conditions the iron manganese boron iron manganese will be in large amount will be in large amount please remember iron manganese have what we call as toxicity when the concentration is high it it introduces toxicity iron toxicity manganese toxicity which they are they should be needed in only small amount okay 
same as copper and zinc but molybdenum molybdenum no molybdenum is another thing it is largely available in alkaline soil okay so the, in Malaysia we don't have this problem lah but in Malaysia we have this problem lah uh the restrictions of macronutrients and uh acid acidic uh soil okay so uh actually what process that makes our soil acidic tadi saya dah tunjuk kan when uh uh, uh, uh i showed you that what what uh what kesalah masuk masuk je eh ada orang Okay, so um, when a soil has um, uh, is said to have uh, is said to have acidic, dah dah lost dah dah eh. Okay, what is the process? Okay, so the process yang paling just now I show you is uh, when when the roots take up nutrients, they release H plus kan dekat dalam soil. Okay, so that is one thing. Okay, meaning that when you plant a crops, the crops process uh, uh, of uptaking up the nutrients will release the H plus ions. Okay, so back to the theory. So acidification, acidification meaning that there is additions of the H plus into the soil environment, can okay? One. Number two is because the loss of the cations. Okay, cations need to bring, brings alkaline punya properties. So, when the cations are washed away, okay, so meaning that uh, it will, it will enhance the, the, the salt to be acidic, okay. So, another one is because high rainfall, it promotes productions of H+, drier region has a fewer H+, producing and retain non-acid cations, so might cause detrimental levels soluble of salt. So, in drier regions such as arid country, they have the problems with uh, acidic types of soil but they have with uh, saline soil okay because accumulations of the salt okay okay so this is the difference if it's neutrals the OH hydroxide and the H plus are equal if alkaline OH negative is more compared to H plus and in acidic condition the H plus is more compared to the OH negative that means the pH <coughs> So in soil, we have a few types of acidity. Okay, kita panggil dia sebagai what we call as residual acidity. So another one, we call it as active acidity. The third one is the exchangeable acidity. Okay, so from the term itself, sekejap saya tunjuk kat gambar ni eh. From the term itself, you can see that a residual acidity is Aluminium or H plus that is binded in the is binded to the soil. Okay, so exchangeable is H plus that is seated. H plus that is seated at the uh what is that? H plus that is seated at the exchangeable site. Dekat CEC tadi yang macam saya tunjuk tu kan H plus tu duduk dekat CEC site. The H plus sit at the CEC site while Another one is you have what we call as active acidity. This acidity is H plus and aluminium 3 plus which are floating inside the water soil solution. Dah memang ada kat dalam soil solution. Di dalam, they swim around, swam around. Okay, but this one is exchange. Maksudnya they absorbed. While, uh, apa ni yang, this was a residual. Residual is the, the most, dia tak susah, tak. It's, it's not easily released lah. But the H plus and OL is there. Okay, why aluminium? Okay, aluminium dia macam H plus juga. It carries acid punya properties. Okay, that's why aluminium is also considered as materials that cause the salt to become acidic. Okay, okay. so that is the difference between three types of acidity. Okay, please remember here are the three types which is residual, exchangeable and active. The conditions are different. Okay, meaning that uh, uh, usually kalau you in normal conditions, we calculate this only. 
But if you want to know more about the potentials of acidity that can be happen or occur in the soil, you have to check the exchangeable. But residual, no. Residual is inside the soil structure. Ingat tak tadi saya ajar the sheet clay kan? Uh, sorry, the octahedral and tetahedral sheet. The aluminium and the hydroxide are bonded. Dia, dia tightly bonded. Tapi one day, kalau soil tu mengalami proses weathering, exposed to the air and tu, dia akan terhakis juga. Tapi it takes a very long time. But the most potential one are the exchangeable and active. Dua ni yang selalu kita calculate. Okay. So, uh, we go a few slide more. Okay, acidic process in soils are caused by weathering of non-acid cations from minerals. Okay. Uh, another process is uh, carbonic and other organic acid. Okay, accumulations and process of decomposition of organic matter. Process nitrification, meaning that you not to, uh, dalam process nitrification is the changes of uh, when you put fertilizer, Fertilizer are changed into available nutrient, which is nitrate. Eh? That is the process of acidification, which cause the nitrification, eh, which cause the acidification of the soil. The fifth one is oxidation of sulfur. And the last one, which I have mentioned just now, is plant uptakes of cations. Sekejap eh. Ada pula je empty sampai. Set, set, set. Okay, so ni adalah enam enam proses yang menyebabkan contribution of the H plus in the soil environment. Okay, so we go one by one. Okay, first weathering of non cat as ah uh, non acid cat ion. What is the meaning of weathering? Meaning that weathering ni dia macam buang. Okay, it's like throwing off. Okay, the the H uh, the the met some materials. Okay, so soil become acidic for two reasons, which is H plus added to the soil solutions. Okay, and another one is the leaching processes. Okay, it comes together. Okay, when the H plus is added, H plus want to replace the cation exchange site. So, when H plus sit at the CEC site, H plus will dis displaced ataupun dia akan keluarkan the calcium and magnesium from the soil CEC site. Faham? Nurin, faham Nurin? Uh, okay. So, when here, it's resulted that the soil is dominated by the acidic cation. Sebab H plus yang duduk dekat situ, H plus dengan AL. H plus dengan AL ni, tengok tadi eh, which one I showed you just now. H plus and AL have higher affinity to sit at the CEC site. Remember? Okay. <coughs> so, when, when you know in our environment sekarang ni, okay, okay, ada hujan acid, kan? And all the acidic materials from the water, okay, jatuh kat dalam tanah and it contributes to the acidification of the soil. Okay, another one is we have the decompositions of organic matter. Okay, it produce carbon dioxide. Okay, okay, uh, 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 okay this carbon dioxide will combine with the H2O and produce a weak acid. However, this is not uh, very significant, lah, but it's still contributing to the <coughs> uh, acidification. Okay, 
accumulations of organic matter. Accumulations of organic matter <coughs> tend to acidify the soil. Organic matter contain numerous acidic functional groups which H plus ion can dissociate. Meaning that, kalau untuk carbon uh, organic matter, there are the functional groups macam ni. So when you when there is a lot of organic matter, it can release that H plus. They can dissociate. Okay. OH ni, it can uh, throw away the H plus and H plus will become in the soil solution. When you determine a pH, a pH is in the soil solution tau. Maksudnya H plus that is in solution, soil solution satu or acidic exigibate site. Dua tu yang penting. Okay, then the third one is oxidification, uh, oxidation of nitrogen. For example, when you took put fertilizer. Okay, here is the uh, nitrate fertilizer. Okay, so in order for it to be available to the crops, okay, there is uh, bacteria. Bacteria will change the ammonium to nitrate. This is the process by, done by the bacteria. So it is called process oxidification, meaning that it adds oxygen. Okay, so it adds oxygen and while doing that, it also release the H plus. But guys, here there four H plus, can? Okay, so it released two H plus into the soil environment. So this H plus will acidify the soil. That's why when when uh, in all palm plantations, when you talk about fertilizer, fertilizer, that's why. Uh, kalau uh, if you ada apa ni? Ladang, okay, you have plantations, soil you day by day ataupun uh, year by year, dia akan acidic, acidic because of this activity. When you put fertilizer, of course, it will acidify the soil. Okay, the same as acidified uh, sulfur, when you put sulfur in terms of the, um, in terms of what is that? Uh, this is pyrite. Pyrite is materials in the soil. Uh, dia macam batuan, bukan batuan eh. Materials lah, okay. In in one condition, when it's exposed to the oxygen, okay, they expose lah, they go through the weathering processes also. Dia akan hasilkan iron sulfate and also 2H+, which is acidifying the soil. Okay, so plant uptake cations, I explained to you just now, when, when one calcium is absorbed, Meaning the, the the soil particle will release to hydrogen into the soil environment. Okay. Okay. So I think uh, we stop until here. Ada soalan tak berkenaan dengan soil? I think soil acidification tu lebih kepada uh, apa ni? Faham je lah. Tahu kan? Okay. So I want to continue with our lab session. Okay, for lab, for lab number three, yeah. Okay, uh, for lab number three is the determinations of soil pH. Okay, the, I give you uh, two weeks time for you to do the lab report. Okay, so uh, the, the objective of this lab is for you to know the method of determining soil pH by using we have a few methods, tapi in this lab manual, we have two methods, which is determinations of um, soil pH using water. Okay, one more is determinations of uh, soil pH using calcium chloride. Ada dua eh? Either you boleh guna dua, satu calcium chloride, satu potassium chloride, tapi in this uh, in this lab, I use calcium chloride. But that is to compare with water. Okay. Uh, siapa eh nak tanya? Kenapa saya guna dua? Why one we use uh, water? Why another one we use calcium chloride? Nisrina, can you answer me? Tak, tak, tak pernah panggil Nisrina. Not sure. Okay, balik-balik pada um, pada residual, exchangeable and active acidity. Apa kaitan dia dengan determination by using only water? Maksudnya you 
campur-campurkan tanah tu dengan air dengan calcium chloride. Apa-apa dia. Saya nak you fikir dulu. Nadia Amira, can you give some idea why? Why I use two types of solution? One is water, one is calcium chloride. What is the relation with the uh, uh, type of acidity yang you belajar tadi? Dah, kena, kena sign. Sign. Uh, Eh. Ah, siapa tadi saya, saya tanya tu Maybe sebab air tu natural Dia punya pH No no, no. Okay try eh no, Husna dia, 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 dia balik balik pada teori Which you learn just now You have three types of soil acidity One is fixed in the soil One is exchangeable One is active acidity Uh, then why you use water first method to calcium chloride method? Ifah Hanani, eh Ifah Hanani, Ifah Hana, Hana. Amira, eh Amira dah tanya kan? Kenapa you guna beberapa Sebab Ingat tak Kait balik dengan What we learn just now When you use a solution For example Solution that containing calcium This calcium Will Will de Replace the H plus Dekat kawasan exchangeable tadi Faham tak But if you use water You only determine the H plus In the source solution. Okay. Okay. Let me explain you the, the lab manual first. Okay. You use two solution. First, we call it as a deionized water. The first method. Number two is you use uh, calcium chloride. Calcium chloride or potassium chloride. But in my case, I use calcium chloride. Okay. So, the procedure is you use 10 gram of soil. Okay. Nanti saya ada video yang ni eh. And you add to a cup, then you letakkan 25 ml air, 25 ml of water inside the cup. Okay, so when you put 25 ml in, uh, of water inside the cup, that is your first experiment, first method. Number two is you take 25 ml of calcium chloride, which is 0.01 molar calcium chloride, meaning that there is concentrations of calcium chloride. Okay, why we use calcium chloride? Because we want that calcium. That calcium, if it's a soil, macam saya cakap, there is two type of <coughs> soil acidity. One is in soil solution, kan? Tengok sini. One is at the exchangeable side. So, when you use only soil solution, you are, deter you are only using water, you are only determine the pH at soil solution. But if you uh, use calcium, calcium will displace the H plus at the exchange side of the soil and make the, uh, make the H plus out from the soil CEC side and it will be in the soil solution. So that's why you kocak-kocakkan bila you dah letak um, tanah dengan uh, 25 ml air, nampak eh? You akan kocak dia macam ni. You, uh, 24 for berapa minit eh? For 50 minutes to 1 hour. That is because you want to, kita pakai pH, kita baca pakai instrumen eh. 
later I'll show you the pH meter. Kita cucuk je kat dalam air salt solution. You determine the pH only in the salt solution. That's why you use, you extract the 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 H plus either in the salt solution ataupun at the exchangeable site. That's why you use calcium chloride. Nurin, faham tak Nurin? Saya confuse sikit. Okay, yang mana? Tak faham lah sebenarnya. Hmm, faham, faham sekejap. Macam mana saya nak bagi faham ni lah kalau bukan dekat lab kan. <coughs> okay, let me show you the video first. <coughs> Set now. Uh, apa ni? Let. Eh, let pH. Macam pH. Eh, mana pula saya punya ni. Alamak, mana ni je, je, jap, 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 jap. Je eh, saya kena cari jap. <coughs> Wait yeah, give me some times. Let me tell. Oh, the email. Let's go. Sekejap eh, saya cari uh, lab tu hilang lah pula. Okay, kita jumpa. Okay, so, so actually determinations of soil pH, kita ada dua method. Okay, one, one, we use 
only kejap, kejap. one we use only okay did it you, you have two methods in determining uh so ph one method is you use water another method is you use calcium chloride solution okay so kita ada dua eh one you weigh soil 10 gram so this is another uh another what we call the beaker also we have 10 gram of soil so one the solution we we pour water another one the 10 gram of soil we pour calcium chloride so my question just now is why we have to use calcium chloride because we want to determine two types of acid acid uh, two types of h plus which is residual acid uh, sorry exchangeable acidity yang you belajar tadi and another one is uh, uh, acidity in soil solution why, why you use water water can because water is only h2o dia hanya boleh larutkan h plus yang mana dia dapat larutkan but when you use calcium chloride it is a a, 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 a solution that has concentrations of calcium so calcium will displace kau uh, dia akan keluarkan potential acidic h plus tadi yang berada di kawasan exchangeable acidity faham tak nurin so maksudnya yang uh, guna water tu untuk check pH uh, untuk aktif acidity yes correct okay, but calcium chloride will check the pH what how kalau calcium chloride uh, untuk check pH residual dengan exchangeable bukan exchangeable dengan uh, so solution ah uh, in so solution aktif dengan residual that's why you use two type because oh, okay generally kalau you when you use solution for example calcium chloride you will extract more h plus because when we talk about exchangeable acidity maksudnya dia ada potential untuk dia jadi active acidity you are calculating two types of acidity but when you use only water sometimes macam pelat uh, orang uh, apa ni agrikal uh, orang uh, apa ni petani okay farmers they only have water to check the ph dia orang tak ada lah calcium chloride kan but why we have to check until exchangeable acidity because exchangeable acidity has the potential to acidify the soil later which also it explain that when you use calcium chloride you for sure you will get a lower value of acid uh, uh, reading sebab ada dua jenis they extract from the cec site and one more is in the soil solution okay while while using water you only have the h plus from the soil solution soil solution ataupun active acidity sahaja clear tak zul haris Okay saja. Nurin clear Nurin? Clear kot. <laughs> Alah kot tu tak nak tu. Okay tak apa. Kita tengok method dia dulu okay. Mana tadi? Okay can you see my 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 video? Tapi tak boleh dengar tapi tak perlu pun. Okay, saya dah share. Sekejap.
Okay, so this is the 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 what we call as the pH meter. So we will dig the the pH meter inside the source solution. Okay, tengok eh lepas ni. Okay, so kita uh, ada dua. Okay, dengar tak suara saya? Dengar. Okay, kalau you nampak ada dua jenis tanah. Satu orange, satu ni. Sepatutnya empat lah kan. Tapi uh, let's say dua ni tak adalah tanah yang sama. Okay, so dua tanah sama ni satu pakai air, satu pakai calcium chloride. Okay, so lepas tu kita shake dia and after we shake, we let the soil to settle down. Because that's why saya cakap tadi, kita, we extract the H plus from the soil by shaking it. Okay, that's why you use water and calcium chloride. So, water only determines the H plus in active acid, active, active, active apa? Active? Acidity. Acidity, okay. Uh, while... Uh, calcium chloride determines active acidity and also residual acidity. Okay. So, lepas kita shake, kita biar dia settle down. So, this H plus, dia terapung-apung kat dalam air tu. Dia dah tak ada dekat dalam soil tu. Okay. Because we have extract that by using water one, method one, water. Method two, calcium chloride. Okay. Okay, when you are um, taking the reading, please, sebab dia, dia ada hujung, uh, di hujung bulb tu, dia ada kaca tau. Okay, sekejap saya tunjuk eh. pH meter bulb. Okay, so if you see here, okay, this is the bulb. Dekat hujung, dia macam ni tadi kan. See, so this is the pH glass bulb. This one will read, uh, the will give the reading. Okay, how it takes the reading is later you will learn in if you take concentration. Okay, but this bulb cannot touch the soil. This bulb can only be deep in the solution, in the water. Okay, so but you have extract the H+, plus. the H+, plus is in the water, no more in the soil. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, that is how you do the reading. Okay, any question? Saya akan attachkan lab tu dekat dalam, uh, apa ni, I can see juga. So, you have can have a look. Actually, dia ada audio tapi tak boleh dengar kan. Okay, do you have any question regarding that? Regarding the 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 video just now? Okay, we'll go back to our uh, lab, lab, lab manual. Okay, so um, 
Okay, while reading the procedure, you can watch the video, eh? Okay, from the results, okay, from the results, you will have uh, from the lab, susah, eh? imagination punya lab ni. Okay, you, just now my students show you, we have two types of soil. One is soil one, I name it as a soil one. Number two is a soil two. So, method one, which is the water, Okay, method one we use the water, remember, the reading is 6.5. Method two, which use the CACL, give the readings of 6.1. Why? Why does the reading in the method two show a lower value compared to method one? Nurin, jawab. Uh, sebab... Sebab kalau guna kalsium, hmm, kalsium, kalsium tu, hmm. kalsium tu tak boleh, dia, dia comp compare dengan hidrogen, dia lagi lower affinity untuk attach ke? Eh, eh bukan. <laughs> Nurin, Nurin. Ah, uh, Okay, uh, Nurin dapat benda tu. Okay, but, but, memang hidrogen, hidrogen, kita nak extract hydrogen sekarang. Tapi you are using 0.01 molar of calcium chloride. This calcium chloride is concentrated. Bukan concentrated lah. Maksudnya dia have higher concentration. So terbalik Nurin. Calcium will replace the hydrogen side. Because you want to extract the hydrogen. Of course calcium. Ni hydrogen duduk kat sini kan. Ni tangan saya ni ada lima hydrogen ni. Duduk pegang lima hydrogen. Tengok eh. So this calcium datang. Dia akan keluarkan, keluarkan, keluarkan lima-lima calcium ni. Eh sorry, lima-lima hidrogen ni. So lima-lima hidrogen ni akan berada dalam soil solution. Okay that's why you, um, the pH are lower because the reading of the H plus are, are higher or lower Nurin? Uh, lagi banyak H plus. Yes because you use the calcium chloride. But hmm. if you use water, water is only water. Dia tak ada calcium pun ataupun anything. Any, 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 any cat ion pun. Faham? So dia tak boleh keluarkan H plus that is seated at the residual acidity. Dia tak boleh kan ada H plus dekat exchangeable site. Dia tak boleh keluarkan sebab water is not strong enough to extract that H plus at the site. Mas Rizal faham tak? Ah boleh Ya Allah janganlah jawab macam ni. <laughs> Yang mana tak faham Mas Rizal? Penat saya kat sini tau. Okay. Okay, faham tak balik Nurin? Uh, yang saya faham macam okay. ni. Uh, yang method tu punya pH tu dia lagi acidic, lagi acidic sebab um, Method dua kan? Aha, yang guna method dia tu lagi tinggi acidity dia sebab uh, calcium tu dia dah ganti H plus so hmm. H plus tu dah release to the soil solution so yes. lagi banyak lagi banyak H plus sebab tu bacaan pH dia lagi tinggi berbanding yes. dengan method one. Betul, it's very very correct. Macam tu je. First, you have to compare between dua soil. The objectives dia. Okay, eh, sorry, patah balik, patah balik. Nanti confuse lagi. You have to compare why these two method has different reading. Which the answer is already answered by Nurin. Okay, sebab calcium has replaced the H plus at the exchangeable site, CEC site. But the water cannot do what calcium chloride do. Because water doesn't have calcium. That's why if you use potassium also can. Sebab tu dekat atas ni, my method is another one is you use one molarity of potassium chloride. But I did not use this. But you can use this in lab. That is because, dia kita panggil this, uh, this exchangeable acidity is the potential acidity. Potential acidity adalah, there are potentials that the H plus will acidify the soil tomorrow or next two days. Because under certain conditions, dia akan keluar daripada exchangeable site. Because exchangeable is 
hold for a while. Okay. Uh, Sharifah Inshira, faham? Faham, Doktor. Ifa, Ifa, ada Ifa ke? Faham. Ah, okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so itu satu. Discuss the comparison between the two methods. Meaning, do you are relate, you should relate that with the residual and also active acidity from your discussion. Why the method, method one and method two give two different answer. Number two is based on the picture I give. Okay, that is your soil sample. I use sample soil one and sample soil two. The color from the color said it indicates something. So why the reading of the soil of soil two is lower compared to the method of uh, compared to the soil one? Average lah, you think lah, ni six, ni ni four again. So it's very distinct. Why? Why the lower soil has a different, uh, a lower pH, number two. And in your discussion, you should also discuss about what is the problem, what is it affects to the crops. Meaning soil one, kalau pH dia macam ni, okay tak? Soil two, if the pH is like this, is it okay? Okay, so this is the rubric of the marks. Okay, steps of the methodology in Cora Edda, tabulated in table for soil 1 and 2, your result. Okay, so based on the result, this is the result. So make it in a table properly. Okay, so answer these questions and also by, by, uh, at the same time do your discussions. Lah. So this is the allocations of the marks. Okay, is it clear? Do you have any questions? If you have questions, please ask me now. If you did not have questions, I assume that